Hello and welcome to my review of the Adeptus Custodes Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought. Now I've bought the Galatus uh, Dreadnought from Forgeworld, which typically costs uh, £56. Then I've also purchased a multi-melter, a Contemptor uh, multi-melter, um, separately, which is £10. So that's £66 to get your uh, Contemptor Dreadnought looking like this. Another little bit of a uh, difference is I've also affixed a um, pair of combi bolters that were on the Telemon Dreadnought. Or you can just make your own pair of combi bolters uh, or just put the, uh, the sword sort of power attachment um, thing on the side and just say that it has got combi bolters. Maybe they're in the sword or, or something like that. But I wanted to uh, have my Contemptor Dreadnought for 40k in the 30k chassis. Now, I decided that before there was any rumours of the uh, of bringing uh, 30k models over to uh, 40k for custodies. So this has been my plan all along to have this. Um, however, Games Workshop have uh, released some beta rules um, for some of the units in uh, in the 30k range, and one of which includes the Achilles Dreadnought, the one with the spear. It's highly likely that they'll release uh, another data sheet uh, in a book sometime in the future um, for the one with the, the sword and the shield. Now, what I've done is I have magnetized the multi-melter um, so that can be moved. Just take that off and put the shield on. And, and hey presto, you can use it in your 30k army. You've got a... a legal Galatus Dreadnought. Just ignore the uh, combi bolters. Uh, so that's given me uh, flexibility. I already have a Galatus Dreadnought, so there's no real need uh, for, for a second one. But it does at least give me the opportunity of using two or having uh, this particular one um, for use in 30K games. So that's sort of like the, the behind the, the reasoning of, of why I've, I've done it and why I've got the, the multi-melter there as well. Um, this is a full review, uh, so I will go through the 40K rules for the model. I won't go through the 30K because I did that um, with the Galatis last year uh, when it came out. Um, spare parts then, so obviously you don't have to magnetize uh, the shield if you don't want to. You can just glue the multi-melter. Um, and the way I did it, is uh, I just had the attachment of the uh, multi-melter that you get with the, the the gun. And all I did is I put a magnet in, but yeah, you don't have to. You can just glue it on there um, as it stands. And what I've also done is glued the elbow armor plating, uh, which is the same as on the knees, but just smaller, onto the multi-melter bolting system, just to give it a, a bit of added flair as well as a bit of protection. It's not, not real protection, just aesthetic protection, I suppose. Because I'd much rather be on this, because this is the, the main loadout that I'd want to have him as. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, that also gives me an opportunity in the future, if I wanted to get a Carey's Assault Cannon, um, spend £10, get a Carey's Assault Cannon, and uh, I think that comes with this similar attachment, then I can just magnetize the assault cannon on there. I've gone for the multi-melter because the custodian guard army, um, very heavy on melee, uh, heavy on number of shots, not so good against tanks, um, you know, unless you go for the the Achilles Dreadnought with that um, LAS cannon, or you go for a land raider, or some Dawny Gull Jet Pikes, specifically with the salvo launchers. Um, so hence why I've gone for, for this. Uh, the other spare parts, uh, other than the shield, uh, is just this part which I got with the, the multi-melter. That's if you wanted to attach it, um, it would basically go in that way or, or that way uh, for an arm for a normal Contemptor Dreadnought. And then this is just like the power um, coupling or whatever that would have gone on his uh, right um, hand that feeds into the, the sword itself. Um, so there you go, they're the, they're the sort of spare parts if you wanted to get one of these and the multi-melter, but it's a pricey, it's a pricey option, it's 66 pounds. And it really depends on whether you want a venerable Contemptor Dreadnought to look like it's in your um, Custodian Guard army, or just a plastic 35 pound Dreadnought. I say just 35 pound, it's still a lot of money um, for uh, you know not very good pose, but still, magnetizable um, to some extent, uh, but just a normal Contemptor Dreadnought, sprayed gold. You can probably add a few spare parts from the, the sets, but they're getting fewer and fewer, as you've probably seen in, uh, in my uh, unboxings and reviews and stuff. You're not getting many spare parts. You go for the £35 one, or one that is 
almost sort of um, double the money. Uh, but it depends on what you want in your force, in your collection, uh, and the aesthetic that you're going for. Personally, I much prefer you know something like this, even if it costs a bit of money. The Custodian Guard Army is very, very small force anyway. It's, it's very high points cost. You don't need many models. So I'd rather kit out each sort of individual model the way I uh, want to. Um, that goes the same for the Land Raider, which I will be doing a video at some point on, showing you the uh, Custodian Guard Land Raider I've, uh, I've gone on and all the extra parts and things and what I've done to it. But it's definitely a step up from just getting a standard Land Raider and you know spraying it gold. Right, so size comparisons. So normal Contemptor Dreadnought, it is taller uh, than normal Contemptor Dreadnought, uh, if you can see that. Um, it might be its pose or, or whatnot, but definitely this top section is is uh, is taller. Um, next to your normal Custodian Guard, obviously it really shares a lot of the aesthetics and will go really, really well. So that's just next to a normal Custodian Guardian. Um, and then an Alaris Terminator, I just so happen to have. Uh, Alaris Terminator goes up to almost his chest, sort of torso. So these are big, uh, big dreadnoughts, um, big models. Um, and the Aquilin Terminator, uh, yeah, so Dwarfs and Aquilin Terminator 2. I don't know why, but I've got a Virtus Praetor there, just goes to show you sort of how, just goes to show you how long that lance is, um, longer than a, or taller than a um, Contemptor Dreadnought, and the bike itself, it's quite a good size comparison, is, yeah, taller as well. So these bikes aren't, aren't very small, you know, they're a good, uh, good size, even though they are, um, shorter than the uh, the Fortua ones. Um, next to a couple of other dreadnoughts, then uh, got the Redemptor dreadnought here. Um, massive, massive thing. It does. Uh, it is bigger than a, uh, a Contemptor dreadnought, um, and obviously you know more poseable because it's plastic. Uh, so just go show you how big a Redemptor is. And then the largest dreadnought, the Telemon dreadnought. They might put the rules in uh, for this one. Um, who knows? But uh, there we go. That's it next to the Telemon. Telemon is a uh, you know fair bit bigger, uh, you know than the uh, than the Contemptor. So hopefully that helps. Um, next to a couple of Space Marines. Then so you've got a Primaris and a normal. Sort of standard Space Marine. Standard Space Marine probably be able to run through his, under his legs. Um, yeah. And then the Primaris is, yeah, up to his sort of groin, groin area. So I hope that helps. It's kind of, I want to say double the height, a bit less than double the height of a, of a Primaris um, Space Marine. So it just goes to show you these things still tower over the battlefield. Okay, so this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules. Obviously, I'll be talking to you about the 40K rules today. Um, I've covered the Galactus Dreadnought with the shield uh, in a video last year uh, with his 30K rules or his Horus Heresy rules. Um, so you'll find him in your brand new Codex Adeptus Custodes book. Um, he's in the Elite section, which is sort of hotly contested. Uh, there's quite a few things in there now, especially with these uh, beta rules um, that are out. Uh, you've got everything in this elite section from uh, Custodian Wardens, which are, you know, uh, a better sort of version of the Custodian Guard and have access to the Castellan Axes. Uh, the Vexillus Praetor in Alaris Terminator armor, a normal Vexillus Praetor, uh, and the Alaris Custodians, you know, the, the Terminator uh, Custodies. So hotly contested, uh, much like their uh, HQ section. So the Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought uh, will cost you power points of a 10 and match play points cost of 130. Then you've got to buy the uh, the weapons. The Curious Pattern Assault Cannon is 25 points, but the multi Multimelter is an extra 27. So that's 157. Plus the Combi Bolter is 2, 159. And then the Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon is a whopping 40. So that's 199 points, almost at the 200 points marker. But I feel that under 200 points for this model is very decent. Um, you're saving two points if you go for the uh, Assault Cannon, but obviously they're the same range, and I'll talk about them in a moment. It's one of these models, again, uh, where it's model, where its characteristics change as it suffers damage. Um, so if it's got remaining wounds of 6 to 10, its movement is 9 inches, Weapon Skill 2+, plus and Ballistic Skill 2+. plus. If its wounds are between 3 and 5, its movement drops to 6 inches, Weapon Skill 3+, plus, Ballistic Skill 3+, plus. and then when it's only got its last two wounds, its 
movement is reduced all the way down to four inches, weapon skill four plus and ballistic skill four plus. So that's still pretty decent. Even when it's down to its last wound or two, it's still a 50-50 chance of uh, getting your hits off. Its strength is seven, its toughness is seven, wounds 10, four attacks, leadership eight, and a save of two plus. So that means that other than the uh, venerable Land Raider, it's got the most wounds in the book. Uh, the Land Raider's got 16, this has got 10. Um, the Land Raider's got Strength 8 and Toughness 8 too though, but it's nice that it's got that 2 plus save. It's weapons. It's a single model equipped with, with a Dreadnought Combat Weapon, a Multi Melter and a Combi Bolter. The Combi Bolter is a normal Combi Bolter, so it's a range 24 inch range, Rapid Fire 2, Strength 4, AP 0, Damage 1. The Carey's Pattern Assault Cannon, which if you don't play 30k uh, and you don't collect Space Marines, this might be the first time you see one of these, um, but that's 24 inch range. It's Heavy 6, Strength 7, AP minus 1, and a damage of 1. Uh, and then a Multi Melter, same range, 24 inches, Heavy 1, Strength 8, AP minus 4, Damage D6, and also if a target is within half range of the weapon, you roll two dice when inflicting damage and discard the lowest result. So that's a nice little... Uh, bonus and the close combat weapon times the strength by two, so you, you've got a strength of 14 there, AP minus three, which is decent, and a damage of three, you know, which is decent too. It's not a damage of D6 or D3, it's a solid three, so, that, so that's brilliant. It can replace its multi melter with the Kiri's pattern assault cannon, and it's up to you if you want to do that. You're getting more shots at heavy six, you're only getting one less strength at strength seven. This is very nice strong uh, weapon. Uh, the AP does drop to minus one and you're only getting damage one, um, but it's nice to get those six shots, uh, especially with a uh, ballistic skill of two plus. There's a high chance you're gonna be hitting and wounding and slightly affecting their, their save and throw. Uh, but the multi-melter is where it's at, especially against uh, vehicles and, and heavily armored uh, units. Its abilities, it has atomantic shielding, so the model has a 5 plus invulnerable save. Unfortunately you can't use this model with the Aegis of the Emperor. It doesn't have Aegis of the Emperor in the ability, so you can't use it with that. It has its own 5 plus invulnerable save. And because it's not an infantry or biker unit, um, you're not going to get uh, Sworn Guardians or the Emperor's Chosen, so you're not going to improve that invulnerable save by one either and get, and get a 4 plus invulnerable. Would have been nice, it really would have, but that's not going to happen. Um, unyielding Ancient. Roll a d6 each time the model loses a wound and on a 6 the damage is ignored and that wound is not lost. That's pretty decent. That's what you'd expect for a, a venerable uh, Dreadnought. So 2 plus normal, 5 plus invulnerable and you get to ignore wounds on a 6. And like, like many vehicles, it's got the explodes ability. So if the model is reduced to zero wounds, you roll a d6 before removing it from the battlefield. On a six, it explodes, and each unit within six inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. Its keywords, Imperium, Adeptus Custodes, Vehicle Dreadnought, Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought. Before I go, I just wanted to compare it to, uh, you know, your standard Space Marine uh, Contemptor Dreadnought. Your standard Space Marine Contemptor Dreadnought costs... Uh, eight power points, so two less than the 10 for the uh, Custodes one. The match play points cost, uh, Contempt Dreadnought is 98 points. The Kiri's Pattern Assault Cannon and the Multi Melter both cost the same. So does the Combi Bolter and so does the Dreadnought Combat Weapon. That's 40 points too. You're gonna to be spending 169 points for the Contempt Dreadnought, but 199 points for the Custodes one. And for those 30 points, the two main differences that you will receive is the save. The save of the Custodes one uh, is a two plus instead of a three plus and the unyielding ancient. So you get to you know ignore a wound on a D6. Now it's up to you whether you think that's worth it, an extra 30 points uh, for a, a better save and ignoring wounds. Personally, I do think it is. He's got 10 wounds anyway. Uh, he's got the, the seven toughness, so it's not the best, um, but it is still quite high. But when you increase his save to two plus, of course, he's only gonna be failing on the one. And even if he does fail on that uh, one in six chance, he's then can mirror that and have a, a one in six chance of ignoring it. I think that's a good trade off and I think uh, that's worth the extra uh, 30 points overall. But I just want to make that comparison. Okay, and that is the end of my review. Uh, what do you guys think of the Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought? Uh, do you have a, a normal Contemptor that you sprayed gold and used in your games? How has it performed? Is it a good choice? Do you think it's uh, better than uh, the Alaris Terminators or even the Wardens? You know, it's essentially got an effective range of 33 inches uh, with its movement of nine inches. It's what, the, the third fastest thing in the Codex? Only the Land Raider is a little bit faster at movement 10 inches. 
put all your opinions and thoughts and things down below. It'd be great to, to read them. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.